Hey everybody and welcome to our podcast show. On this week's podcast, we'll be continuing with our best 2022. And this time around, we'll be talking about some of the best gadgets and software, uh, which we think made us, in, well, made us impact uh, for us all. So uh, let's get to the list of the best of 2022. There are a couple of things which makes this, you know, possible. So you have to have like affordable price. Um, it has to be practical and it's got to be easy to use. So let's not waste any time and get the show on the road. So Stephen, uh, you know, I'm an uh, Amazon convert now. So let me start with the Amazon Echo Show 8. And I have it right here. Check it out. This is it. You can see that? Yeah, I've got one of these. And uh, this thing here is amazing, right? Uh, I've been using it for about two weeks and I love it. Everything is automated, right? And I like the fact that you can actually interact with it. So, you know, with Amazon Prime, you can, you know, watch video with the video, the Amazon video and also the Amazon Music. Uh, you can actually integrate with Spotify and uh, Netflix and more. And you can actually integrate with the, the Blink cameras. Look at the Blink cameras. Uh, Fire TV, Echo Dot, all the Dot speakers. And you can integrate your calendars, reminders, and schedules, all for 89 Canadian dollars, uh, 69 US. So what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I bought my parents one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't watch the show, so uh, they don't know that yet. I don't want them messing up my algorithm. <laughs> but yeah, no, I bought I bought them uh, two Blink cameras and also a Echo Show 8 mm -hmm. when it was on special. Yeah. Uh, the Blink cameras were 39. I, I hope you got those. I got those. Listen. I got those. Good. Two of them. Yeah. Good. yeah. Yes. So those are a fantastic buy. There's also a base for them if you want them to swivel right. inside the house. So mm -hmm. you, you, you might want to get that later on it, when it goes on sale. There's even the Blink Hub that you need to buy, which... Um, allows you to grab mm. all your, your footage and actually centralize it all inside your house near your router. So yeah. that's also, also a really cool functionality of the Blink system. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really look at the Blink system earlier on, but once I did, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of neat. This yeah. is actually better than Wise, which is great. So yeah, definitely a good buy all around. Interesting way and uh, exciting way to get into a home security system yeah. uh, on the cheap. Because now you can put things all over your house and it'll alert you when something goes funny. You can also, because those are such small little cameras, yeah. plug them into a USB uh, charging bank mm -hmm. as a backup bank. That's true. It's like a UPS and then, you know, have those uh, running uh, all <laughs> over the place with a plug inside of it, right? I so mean, yeah. that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's great. For example, if you have um, parents who are not very tech savvy, of course, um, you have a camera in the house, um, in the kitchen especially as well, if they're, you know, and if, if there's any accidents, you can get alerted and stuff like that, yeah. uh, which is pretty good. And especially if you have any kids, uh, if, if especially youngsters, infants, babies, whatever, you can yes. have one as like a baby monitor as well. Yeah, uh, that's one of the hot, hot uh, ways of using it is that baby monitors are expensive and mm. they don't do a whole lot. One of the best ways to actually set it up is to actually put it right over the baby's crib, have motion sensing set to maximum <laughs> then they'll ping you every single time the baby moves which is great <laughs> a good thing about them is uh these blink cameras have built-in speakers yes. so you can actually get the amazon app right or on the show a to actually speak to it so that the other person on the other room can hear what you know or especially you can uh, link it up to what you call the blink door camera as well yep the, the big, doorbell door camera yeah um, uh, especially Mm, especially if you get like deliveries come in and uh you know you could you know ask the delivery guy to drop it off at the porch or whatever yeah. and you know that's and uh, if you need anything you know the signature and stuff like that you can actually alert it you know family members hey somewhere some guys at the door going you know sign for it and things like that so mm. it's pretty neat i like that and the, the other good things about the amazon show eight uh, they got the two models right you got the show five which is smaller yes and that's probably good for maybe in an in an office environment home office environment or something in a bedroom bedroom uh, the show eight slightly bigger with a bigger screen of course you could put that in the living room or kitchen, kitchen. yeah the yeah. kitchen uh where you spend most of your time <laughs> making recipes. food cook yeah that's right recipes uh, putting uh I, I love the fact that i can just yell to uh my yeah. uh my smart home assistant because i'm not going to say the name <laughs> and have her add specific ingredients that i need onto my shopping list shopping list mm -hmm. so if i want them to uh hey 
smart assistant. Uh, <laughs> can you add milk to my shopping list? It'll yeah. add it to my shopping list. And yeah. also uh, populate it with uh, frequently uh, accessed uh, items that you normally buy anyway. So it keeps them in record. So you can just add them back on later on. And you access that all from your Amazon Alexa app. Mm -hmm. And if you know anyone that actually has an Amazon Echo Show device uh, uh, anywhere in the world, you can actually link up and, and talk to them that's true. With that device. That's true. If, free yeah. calling over Wi Fi. Exactly. So if you're, say, traveling, like you, we're going to be doing going to Italy, right? And you have a family yep. member at home. Um, then you could say, you know, when the time zone is correct, you can, hey, don't forget to do your homework and stuff like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, my kids are, uh, I, I'm using, because I'm giving my parents an Echo Show 8, my, my kids can actually call mm. my uh, my parents to talk to them whenever it's convenient, right? Yeah. Because it, it's a bigger display. They just have to yell at it to, to call. And <laughs> that's right. It's, it's, it's kind got of fun a, for everyone. Built in 1080p camera, which is pretty mm -hmm. decent. And you don't need any software setup. You just say, hey, call dad or mom and yeah. uh, the uh, the device on the other side will ring and you just accept and then the camera just switches on you could do your, you know two way yeah. uh, conversation there, right there so it's really good i like the I way also thought about, yeah i also like I the fact thought about that okay yeah that's good that's good i i also like the fact that uh you know you could say hey so and so uh, the alex name I yeah. don't know to bleep um but you can actually uh, set reminders and things that it'll auto add it to your calendar. So if you link it up to, say, your Gmail calendar, mm -hmm. it will insert that calendar entry in there. And you can have it on your phone, of course, and everything. So it reminds you, uh, say, 10 minutes in or a day before, things like that. And it, it's 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 a personal assistant and it's all it is. ready to go. And you can interact with it. You can ask it questions, say, hey, tell me a joke. And it'll do that. And they show me the scores of football or soccer. And it'll show you that as well. Read the news, everything. So it's That's super... what my kids do with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my kids do with it. I might actually end up, uh, if it goes on sale again, I might actually end up with an Echo Show 10. I like the fact that it rotates around and the speaker underneath it is actually much, much higher quality oh, right. than all the other Echo Shows. Uh, I've also noticed the fact that mm -hmm. in the Echo Show, the, speak the microphones aren't that great. So uh, by upgrading to the 10, because it the direction of your voice, mm -hmm. uh, you can yell at it more effectively. I, it, could you put that on your fridge? I think you mentioned about that. You could... Is it like oh, a the panel? fifteen you can. Oh, the, the fifteen, 15 I think the you big can buy one. a magnet kit, mm -hmm. and it'll it'll just you it allows you to do that. But you would have to find some way to actually power it, right? So you would still have to drape it around the fridge, around yeah. the corner, to put it into the the, the receptacle, the power power receptacle. So there's there's a way there's yeah. ways to do that. But I don't think I'm gonna do the Echo Show fifteen. I will be I will strongly think about the Echo Show ten mainly because. It does have the upgraded speaker. Mm -hmm. It is actually, I think it's a smaller version of the Echo Studio speaker. Oh, right. Okay. In the base. Ah, so right. it actually sounds a lot better. And mm -hmm. you could probably also pair it with the Echo Show subwoofer so uh, you can get better bass sound. Yeah. But in the in the kitchen, I think because it rotates around mm -hmm. and because it's looking at you and then looking at the living room, I think in in the on the countertop right. where you where you are, I think it's more effective. I think yeah. it's better. Yeah. Because yeah, you are always got your back to it. Then it's looking at you. Then it can hear you. Yeah, true, true. I, the other thing I like about this is that, you know, if you subscribe to Prime, right, Amazon Prime, I ordered this in the morning and it got delivered in the afternoon. <laughs> Just Richmond nuts. has a distribution center. It's actually very close to you. <laughs> oh, really? Closer than you think. Damn. Yeah. It was so crazy. I thought, okay, I thought, okay, I'll, I'm going to just jump in and get it. And um, there is definitely an Amazon warehouse yeah. near you. <laughs> and uh, I thought, okay, I'll see how 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 good it is. Because I wasn't going to go to the five. I thought, okay, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Five yeah. small. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight is the, the right size these days. Yeah. And uh, I love it. It was all integrated, especially with the cameras and everything. And, uh, and I also, I think you got the one with the, Light bulb, right? The package deal. Yeah, we got the deal package deal with the light bulb. It was it, it, they hide this is really really. Sh <laughs> I don't think it's their fault, but they have bundles with free light bundles, bulbs. Yeah. You have to you have to click on the free thing to get the free thing. Yeah. So uh, I do have a light bulb. I'm not. I haven't installed it yet. Oh, I don't know if I, I will. I installed it. I didn't get the uh, yeah. bundle. I had to buy the light bulb separately, a pack of two. And this okay. is the TP Link light bulb which is oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, alexa approved and everything works with alexa so give it a try so i downloaded the software on the app uh integrated with the the sam uh, this echo show eight yeah. and i can say you know alexa lights on and it just come on and alexa in yeah. different colors for rgb I might put and everything it somewhere 
You're fantastic. I don't know if I'm going to put it in the rest of my house because I have a Philips Hue set up in right, my house. Right. You know, the expensive, fancy stuff. So I might just put it in, you know, like maybe a random room where yeah. I can just like, hey, okay, <laughs> let's play with this. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. I, lo I love the fact that you can actually turn on the lights, turn off lights, just doing voice commands. And that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Way ahead. So way, that's the thing, ahead. you know, when people buy these devices, they think, okay, you have to use the app. You have to touch the screen on the show eight, the device. No, you can actually do it by voice. And it's I just fantastic. Touch it. Yeah, very yeah. touch it. So that's that. I think that's one of the best kind of a home device you can actually get a smart home device you can get for, for uh, your home right now. So soon, Echo Show 8. So you should check mm -hmm. it out. 89 Canadian dollars, 69 US. So not bad not at bad. all. Not right. Bad. Next, we have the uh, streaming device, the best of streaming device. So I got this thing here right actually now. Right. So this is the Fire Stick. They call it the Amazon Fire Stick yep. with the voice remote control. So this thing and plug straight to the back of the TV. So uh, imagine you already have an existing smart TV or uh, one of these big LCD TVs, but it doesn't come with any Amazon stuff, right? Or Prime or anything like that. You can actually plug this in and it'll just convert it into a smart TV, literally. So you can actually plug it into any monitor as well with HDMI output with yeah. built-in speakers, say for example, then you can turn that monitor to a TV and uh, it goes into a HDMI port uh, powered by a micro USB cable. And with the voice remote control, literally has all the uh, settings with Netflix, Prime Video, Disney, music, and you can press the blue button here. It'll give you the Alexa voice commands. It's and a very good upgrade for any ties in OS TV. That's that's right. Pre <laughs> pre smart garbage. <laughs> yeah, pre smart TV. So you can imagine yeah. you, you bought a seventy inch, eighty inch watch, uh, TV, LCD TV, but it doesn't come with all the smart. Uh, apps that go with the TV, right? So you can plug that yeah. in and it'll turn it into an Amazon style. I have a new egg special. It's like, what's, what's it called? I don't even know what the brand name is anymore, but it didn't have smart capabilities inside. Yeah. However, because you, if you have one of the newer Amazon devices, it also has an IR blaster in the front of the remote mm -hmm. control. So what it will do is when you set up your new TV, when you set up your Fire Stick with an old TV, it will actually allow you to figure out how to turn on that TV with the IR code. All right. So it'll go through all the settings and everything. Now you can turn on your whatever the brand is, high sands, whatever, as well as turning on your Fire TV all at the same time. It really is smart. It's, it really integrates everything. It gives you a great That's experience. True. true. And what I'm waiting for, and I think a lot of people are waiting for right now, is definitely a really good um, sound bar. Right. So I'm hoping that maybe Amazon, what they do in the very near future mm -hmm. is integrate an Amazon Alexa inside a sound bar, but also good. with a Fire TV. That's true. So then that way you plug it right in and you're good to go because they have the Fire Box. It's this big. I yeah. wish it had a speaker inside. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. Well, this thing is, uh, you know, it, they do a 4K version, but I don't think I need a 4K. Uh, a 1080p no, not is really. fine because, um, you know, you, you get all of the Amazon features, Alexa yeah. features, including... Uh, you can watch all your Blink cameras on the That's big right. TV, um, and it works on NTV, and it costs twenty nine US dollars. Uh, sorry, twenty nine Canadian dollars. Yeah, nineteen US, and then it's sold out at the US. So, yeah. So get the four K version if you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the four K version. I think it's slightly pricey. I think uh, thirty thirty nine forty nine. I think it's forty nine dollars Canadian. I so. have it attached to a ten eighty p TV. It's fine. So get, yeah. if you if it's a if it's sold out, get the get, get the four K version. There's not much difference between the two, but mm -hmm. you at least get something that might be a little more future proof and software updates and everything are the same across the board. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it doesn't I, matter which I, one I've been get. using that to watch all my Prime video. Uh, I love the uh, the way that you know I could use the commands. I don't even know. I don't even need to like scroll through the channels and all of. No, uh, the, you don't. I just say, "Hey, Alexa, uh, you know, watch so and so," and then it'll just show up. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I love well, this. one of the uh, one of the accessories that I wish they would put on sale is uh, I have a Fire TV, which is the sixty five inch oh, Omni 60, okay. series. Okay. And uh, one of the things that I hate is the fact that the remote control always goes missing. <laughs> now I know I know that I can yell at Alexa to change my channels to do everything like that, right. but sometimes I just want the thing in my hand uh, as an upgrade. And I hope they put this on Black, um, not Black Friday, but I hope this, they put this on sale for Boxing Week mm -hmm. in Canada. We have a Boxing Week yep. uh, sale, so I'm looking for the Amazon Pro Remote Control. This actually has a a, uh, a finder inside of it. Oh right, and lights. So okay. if you if you lose it in your couch. You can actually ring it and it'll light up. 
<laughs> so you can see where it is. Sells for 44 Canadian. Uh, I'm hoping I can get it for at least 30, 40% off on Boxing Week. I will definitely buy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like all these little gadgets. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, so um, computer-wise, I have this mm -hmm. one here. Uh, I think this is the what we call the gaming mouse. So one of the best ones I've seen for the price. Yeah. Uh, I think I've showed you this in previous uh, podcasts, but I have to say it is a, it is a really good one. It's, it's super responsive. It goes uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless or Bluetooth. And uh, a good thing I like about it, I think you get that with a lot of the Logitech ones, is it has the little compartment there which you can store your USB dongle so you, you know you don't have to lose that. Um, you know, that's a real pain in the ass. You know, yeah. like this one here has a hole in the bottom, but when you push it in there, you can't get it out. <laughs> and uh, this one isn't Bluetooth, so that kind of yeah. sucks. I just showed you. There you go. Yeah, see, that's so much better. Yeah. I mean, George and his team actually thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> they figured it out that that was that was a good idea. Like you remember the um, you remember this this mouse here, the uh, this one. Okay, okay, little uh, that little one. Okay. This is the rat. This oh, is the like, the, uh, uh, the mouse nine. Is it uh, rook? Is it rook cat? Mad cats. Oh, mad cats. Mad cats. Yeah, mad, mad cats, cats. Right, mad cats. So this is the the mouse nine. But this this transmitter thing. Oh my god! Like it's it's, it's so hard to pull out. Like, oh, it's right. right there. It's it, I right? see it. I see it. And the Bluetooth sucks. Oh, well, great looking mouse. Shitty Bluetooth. This this one, <laughs> the Bluetooth is amazing. Uh, USB uh, dongle if you want. And I like the contoured grips here on either side. Yeah. Six programmable buttons, RGB using uh, the Corsair software, of course. Small and for travel. Yeah, it, perfect for traveling and that. And the only thing I don't like is the USB kind of connector here, right there for charging Ooh. the mouse. Because it's uh, super narrow, you have to use the Corsair cable that come with it. Can you put that back up on the screen for a second here for all our viewers? Now... You might it. be able to tell, but is that a USB micro or USB C? USB micro. Oh no! That's oh, fail. The oh, yeah. that's a fail right that's there. That's the sorry. only thing. But hey, <laughs> for fifty nine Canadian dollars, forty nine US, it's not bad. It's, it's a pretty decent mouse, and it's been around for about a year and a half. Um, but this is USB C, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, USB C is better, of course. <laughs> but this one, uh, it's okay for that price. Um, that I think you know for for especially for traveling and that and also for laptops it work it connects with my laptops most uh, Bluetooth devices connect to a laptop they don't work that well right no. uh, but this one works really well and uh, I quite like it. I've been using it for since I got it since about a couple Good. of weeks ago so nice. yeah ten thousand DPI uh, super lightweight and ninety nine grams uh, it's got a slip, slip stream technology I I, I I have no idea. What it what does, that? but it's to do with the wireless uh, data bits. It, it does. Oh, maybe it's more secure. Maybe. Uh, yeah, and more maybe. responsive, but I guess. Is that a, a USB dongle thing or is that a Bluetooth thing? Because if it's the USB dongle thing, you're not using it half the time. No, it's uh, a Bluetooth thing, I believe. It's a Bluetooth thing. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the 2.4 gigahertz wireless is, is a separate thing. Okay. It uses that dongle, so it doesn't really need that thing. Okay. Um, 60 hours of battery life, so it's not bad um, for one single charge. And uh, I usually charge it up at the end of the night anyway. So yeah. again, the only thing I don't like but is the micro USB cable, which is yeah, proprietary. I, yeah. I don't like that either. It's not <laughs> it's not proprietary. It's just that if they break, they break. Yeah. They die. The, the problem is this this one here is so narrow that I tried using other USB cables, micro so USB. They don't fit. It won't fit. It, it, oh, that's bull. That's, that's the baloney. thing. You have to use the uh, the Corsair cable that come with it. Okay, um, so maybe that's why it's fifty nine dollars, and they probably have a new one that's eighty nine dollars with right. USB C. I know, I know, but <laughs> you know, for the price, I think it's it's great. And um, but it's they, fair, it's fair, you know, fair. And you can you know check out some other uh, wireless mouse uh, with USB C. I think the Steel Series does one. I think Razer, yeah. but you're looking at eighty, ninety, hundred dollars for those easily. Yeah. I was looking for mice like a long time ago, and uh, I came across mice that I like from Logitech, but even their their cheapest ones are starting price at least eighty nine dollars for something that's Bluetooth decent. Uh, I do like their ergonomic mice. I think yeah. they're fantastic. Uh, but the one that I really wanted was battery powered. It lasted for like uh, like forever. Yeah. But it's the one that kind of stands up. I really like that one. Yeah, I think yeah I, I don't get, I, don't get me wrong. There are the other brands out there. Logitech is one of the big brands yeah. I like as well. 
Um, they have amazing mice, to be honest mm. with you. I like, I like them. You know, and uh, they they cater for like the ordinary user all the way to the pros, the gaming, you know, esports. Well, it saved my wrist. So I'm not at this station much except for a podcast, but when I'm at my other desk, yeah. without that, my wrist would be in pain right now. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this part here, the wrist right yeah, here. Yeah, right that, here. Like that, when, instead yeah. of doing this, I do this now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. So and it's a uh, lot better. I didn't realize that there's um, ways of holding mice. I'll give you an example, right? This is a palm. Yeah. Okay. This is a finger, and yep. this is a claw. Yes, the claw grip. <laughs> a claw grip, right? They call it. Yeah. So there are different ways of holding the mice, depending on how you, is you know. The new use. Logitech, you shake the hand. You, you shake the, the hand. You shake the hand, and you just nice move it up you. and down. I seen that. One. That's yeah, right. It's very nice. So I like that. All right, moving on. We have probably one of my best purchases of 2022, okay? Let me bring it up. This is called a GK 14-inch uh, portable uh, 4K USB-C monitor. Oh, thank you for saying USB-C. I, I, I'm listening now. All right. Continue. This Continue. thing, <laughs> it, you can, like, uh, of course, it's got the, the stand. Yep. Okay. And uh, you can see the ports of the side right there. Uh, if you see, here you go. That's yep. HDMI. So USB-C. Yeah. One USB C, HDMI, two uh, USB C, yeah. right? Yeah. You see that there. So yep. two USB Cs, one HDMI, and on the other side, it's got the uh, micro USB port for charging if you need to, or you can use USB C. Wait, um, wait, hold on. Is that micro USB? Uh, it yeah, for all the oh. generation. That's only for charging, right? Uh, or you can use <laughs> USB C instead. Oh, you can. Okay, of course, so that's fine. of course. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. And one of the USB ports can be used as a monitor output to plug okay. straight into monitor. Okay. So I don't need. I was you concerned for a second. Yeah, so you don't need the micro USB as only for people who haven't got USB C, right? So for my laptop, it's got USB C. I yeah. can plug the USB straight from one cable from the laptop straight into there, and it'll boot up no problem. Okay. And you also have HDMI if you need it. All right. Uh, uh, input, and uh, the controls include, of course, uh, this thing's got built-in speakers, by the way. All right, so yeah, there's some sound. Yeah, some sound. It uh, has all the controls for the uh, on-screen display for yep. uh, you know the, the brightness and everything. Yep. And nothing about it is touchscreen. Okay. It's touchscreen. Well, so touchscreen um, and 4K. 4K. Bad. So Bad. I've been using this to travel as well as a second monitor. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 not, um, it's not cheap. It's, it's about 400 Canadian and 299 US. Say, it sounds expensive. It sounds expensive. But you have <laughs> you have the 1080p version, which is a lot cheaper. Yep. That's around about 290, 280 Canadian. Okay. Um, but what I like about it is portability, right? You, could, you yeah. it's, it's literally the size of a laptop and it's super thin. You can carry this along with your laptop and use it as a second screen. I know like people think, oh, what do I, do I need that for? But it's really handy, especially with this touch screen. Okay. Can, so if can, you have like a, a, say a Chromebook, if you have a Chromebook, because Chromebooks are really tiny, tiny little screens, like I'm yeah. using one right now just yeah. for the rundown. Mm -hmm. If I had a second screen, I'd be able to throw everything on one side. It's, it's pro like, I love Chromebooks to get me wrong. It's just that I need another screen most of the time. Yeah. Because the resolution is a little wonky. So it's 1920 by 1080. If I had another 1920 by 1080 screen, I would have what I'm used to normally, which is like the 4K resolution on my regular PC laptop yeah. available to me, which would be great. So the 1080p version is like, is it a lot less expensive or is it just a it's, little It's a, it's a lot more expensive, less expensive. And okay. uh, if you don't need the 4K, uh, 1080p is fine. And especially on a 14 inch screen anyway. You're not going to use the nice. full 4K. Uh, even no, no, even sure. on this 4K monitor, the portable monitor that I have now, I usually set it to 19, you know, the 1080p <laughs> because okay, you want okay. the bigger well, pixels, so right? You Icons yeah. you can see. Uh, but it gives you the option if you need to. And good. this would be also be good for uh, video camera um, footage and filming. So you could use it as a, a monitor monitor for the footage that you're filming, uh, you know, like a, yeah, like a monitor. Okay. Um, you know, so... You know, brightness is fairly good. You know, you got the two, uh, 1200 contrast ratio, 1200 to one, uh, 14 inch, and it's LED backlit uh, panel, uh, 60 yep. million colors, of course, and everything, 4K, aluminum body, 3.5 millimeter jack for the for the headphones as well. Yes. Uh, and it comes with, of course, USB-C, two of them, uh, HDMI output, and a uh, micro USB for charging if you need to. Okay. Um, so this one, uh, it's it's a it's amazing little purchase, I think, and it's saved me 
numerous times because, of course, when I was back in the UK, I remember in the summer I was doing the podcast yeah. with you. I was actually using that as well. I got a monitor set up uh, for, you know, doing the podcast as well as yeah. streaming as well. So it's portable. Okay. Portability, is, I think, is the key of this. Now, is and this one uh, Adobe RGB certified? I No. Anything on the box? <laughs> No, it's not. Okay, that would be a bonus thing, but <laughs> just needed to, to yeah. ask for those people that are looking yeah. for a secondary display to do Photoshop on one and something else, yeah. right? So you'll sure. definitely want to continue to use your primary display. This is secondary for email. Yeah, 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 things okay. like that. So so it's good. it's good for, again, traveling. And also, you know, if you're doing uh, podcasts and other things like that, you could use it as a second monitor. Very uh, nice. So, so that's the uh, other purchase. And the other one is, of course, to go with that, uh, you know, you know, I do a lot of streaming, especially for yep. my show uh, live, and uh, I need a, a compact, portable uh, capture device. Yeah, uh, I can use at home or while I'm traveling, and uh, nothing beats this. This is the Elgato CamLink. Yes, an industry K. standard device that shouldn't give any plat any streaming platform a problem or podcast platforms except for one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently uh, streaming through the, uh, uh, the X EVGA XR1, right? Oh, that problematic thing on a certain platform. Yeah, well, it works fine here <laughs> right now. Fine. So, uh, 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 you know, I took this out, and this is so small. I can carry it with you while traveling, and again, do your podcasts and streaming yeah. things like that. It's only got two ports, well, two connectors. Yeah, uh, one is a USB C. Right? Which yep. connects straight to your computer. Let me see. It. Let me see. It yep. And also HDMI, which um, connects to, to your camera. So the camera yes. goes one end, uh, whether it be a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Yep. HDMI output goes in there, and then the uh, USB goes into the computer. So I've got this little cable because sometimes the 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 actual USB is quite big in I mean yeah. the width. So you just need to put that in there, and then plug that into the uh, computer. So then you're good to go. You're good to go. It um, works on every platform. Yeah, it works on everything. One certain one. <laughs> so this one is uh, compact, portable, and lightweight uh, for PCs and Macs. Uh, works on OBS, Streamlabs, and any other streaming platform or other, um, you know, video capture. Podcasting platform. <laughs> Podcasting that platform. works properly. <laughs> yeah. It captures uh, and record at uh, 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60. So that's nice. more than enough for most streamers and um, podcast people okay. recording, things like that. Good, good. It, um, although this little device is small, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's pricey, but I think it's adequately priced at 169 Canadian and it's at 115 US. Yeah, that's uh, not terrible. That's, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's not terrible at that's, all. That's not bad. So uh, this is the kind of device that we'll be using uh, for most of the podcasts and streams that we record. So get yourself one of these. Um, there are other brands. I haven't tried those, but you, if you're with a El Galto brand like this one or the yeah. EVJ XR1, those are dedicated for streaming and capturing, right? So yeah. you're not going to go wrong on that. And plus you get a lot of support from those big brands. You can download the latest firmware, you update it, it's really easy, Yeah, things like that. Oh, what are you yeah. using? Uh, what am I using? I'm using a um, a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro, which is a uh, mini production switcher. So I actually have the ability to switch from multiple cameras if I wanted to, but because I don't have them set up, I only have one camera. Uh, this is a low latency uh, interface, which runs mm -hmm. at 1030, 1080p 30 or 1080p 60. Uh, and it takes uh, any input from any camera. So right now I have my... Uh, Blackmagic Production 6K Pro camera that's hooked up to it. It's running at 6K, but it's down sampling it from 6K yeah. into 1080p and sending it out to the screen. This is a manual uh, setting. Uh, this is a ma this is a manual camera. Okay, it okay. has no autofocus. So uh, it, uh, earlier I was trying to you know get the oh, focus and everything yeah. like that. That's why I was <laughs> running back and forth because I can't focus this camera. It's meant to be operated, not the other way around. Right? Yeah, I you're meant to have must, someone at yeah. the other end uh, holding the camera. Is, somewhere else in the room i can't find it right all right now. um but that's what i'm running here I, there are other cheaper alternatives there that look like the cam link please don't buy them for this purpose there are actually issues with some of those devices because they don't use the latest codecs they mm. actually use like um m some mp 
like it's an old old um uh mpeg codec yeah that has been replaced and it puts a lot of resource strain and latency into that's your right. feed and so it, if, yeah yeah it's not optimized for streaming or uh game streaming and yeah. podcasts and stuff like that and they're cheap they're 40 bucks yeah but you're gonna don't, pay for it. That's right. Don't don't get that. You're gonna get like jitters. You're gonna get freezes. Yeah. Uh, random freezes. And the color is really bad too. And it's it's not smooth. Yeah. And you know that if you go for an Elgato brand, they are designed for streaming, game streaming at the highest yeah. level, right? You're looking at uh, 1080 to be a 60 frames per second streaming yes. live as well, live now. And you can also you know make sure that you know you're gonna get. Uh, a brand like that, you know, you support it. You get get supported with the latest firmware and updates right. and things like that. So yeah, yeah. Talking about the 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 A10 Mini Pro, they were going for on Black Friday at four hundred and eighty dollars. It's worth it. I mean, wow. before, uh, the Min- A10 Mini Pro is definitely a one of the best yeah uh, uh, beginning switchers out there. It records everything to a SSD, so That's if you good. plug one in, it, you can record your entire show, and then you can just. Uh, broadcast it. Yeah. If you're recording uh, to um, to YouTube, if you're streaming directly live here, if you have the hard drive hooked up to it, you would actually have the entire show recorded in uh, 1080p at this quality on this mm-hmm. side without any judders or streaming artifacts. Yeah. So you could choose to end the show and upload a higher quality version oh, after nice. the show. Nice. And you could even edit on it if you wanted to. There is a one higher version called the ATM Mini Pro ISO. The ISO actually records every camera on its individual stream. Oh, and yeah. then you can actually just kind of edit, edit and put them edit together. together. Right. right, I guess I get you. I get you. Well, but at four forty nine, fantastic value if you wanted anything this yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gone back in price now because the Black yeah. Friday's ended. But however, sold out. Um, I think like you said the boxing um event, uh, 20- the Canadian Boxing Week event. I think you, we have that in the UK up. as well. We have that in the UK yep. on the Boxing it's Day very, sale. Very British, very <laughs> Commonwealth thing, and we do have it in Canada. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Great. And talking of streaming, uh, since we're you know we we're, we're doing that, we need a decent software. And suitable platform to stream our content, unlike the other platform we have yeah. troubles with. Um, so Apparently it streams. It, but we, yeah, yeah. How scary would that be? How scary? <laughs> oh my god! Relying on that platform, Riverside. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, the uh, streaming platform that we're using to record uh, in this is we're doing a workaround. So we're using the web interface. Uh, to get our windows with the screen so you can see yep. Stephen and you can see me and then feeding that um, stream to a software platform, which I use for live streaming. It's called uh, Streamlabs slash OBS, right? So you can Streamlabs and OBS. Uh, it's by far the most popular for streamers. Um, you can set up merchandise, you can do giveaways, you can do like moderation, everything. And it's a ton of features on there. Right, multi- moderation, you say? Yeah. Maybe Elon Musk should look into moderation. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> it's in, it, it, it integrates with Twitch uh, and uh, Facebook, YouTube, and you can do multi-stream and things like that. Um, you know, Twitch being the most dominant platform uh, for chats, emotes, donations, community events, and things like that. So it is an amazing platform. Uh, it's free. You can go for the free tier, which is, uh, I think it's limited to so certain features. You can't yep. do the merchandise of, or giveaways and things like that. But if you do, if you want your content out there, the free one is available right now to download. But if you want all the other extra features, then it costs 19 US dollars per month for the Streamlabs Ultra, they call it. And I'm using that right now. And it's fantastic. Um, you know, it saved me a bunch of times, especially doing this work around with Riftside slash <laughs> straight into YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a Logitech, Logitech company, so it's backed by a very large, large organization. Uh, coincidentally, Streamlabs OBS was actually a Vancouver company that was purchased by all right Logitech. I so uh, okay. there's a Canadian connection right here. So what they what they're doing is uh, really great. I yeah. like the fact that they have a more polished interface than the standard open source OBS. Mm-hmm. But of course, there's a lot of times where people get very confused between the two. Like, is it Streamlabs OBS or OBS? Well. This is the paid one, and this has more yeah, features. That's right. So OBS, you can download that right away, and it's free to use. Yeah. Uh, it's got all the features that you need. But yeah. if you want the actual services, uh, such as merchandise, uh, giveaways, multi-stream to different platforms, yeah. 
uh, full integration with Twitch, with the emotes and chats and all that kind of stuff, then the Streamlabs is the you know the one to go for with the paid uh, subscription service, which I'm using yeah. right now. And uh, I haven't heard back since then. I signed up and yeah. I thought it gives you templates. It gives you um, everything that you need, especially if you're an up-and-coming streamer that you want to do, um, what do you call them, uh, sponsorship. So it does sponsorship yep. as well. That's okay. You have to subscribe to Streamlabs of that. OBS is the software engine uh, platform, so that you can install and download, and you can use that. Uh, but Streamlabs is the service subscription, which gives you more. And right. I definitely recommend it because it saved me a bunch of time, especially with what's happening with uh, some certain podcasts platform yeah so. i know it's uh kind of kind of <laughs> crappy how uh how they say that they can stream too imagine if we were streaming the show and it started cutting out oh my god pissed off your your uh, donors and people would be exactly exactly i mean luckily i i do streaming live streaming every week and i know about this right obs yeah. stream labs and stuff like that if i didn't know about that then i'll be like what do i do uh and this is one of the workarounds that we did and because of our technical knowledge, we're able to do this. Uh, yeah. It's not simple. It's not hard. It's, it's, it's just yeah. basically open the browser, feeding that browser feed into the OBS Streamlabs, and then hit and record. This is <laughs> this got a record function on yeah. the OBS, which is fantastic. You know, well, you can go thank live. You for reminding me, you reminded me about the subscription. I actually need to downgrade or actually I need to cancel our subscription again. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so check that out. It's a fantastic software for streaming and podcasts and stuff like that. And you hit the record button to do whatever you want. It's great. Okay. Talking about editing and video recording and stuff like that. Uh, not everyone can afford a MacBook Pro uh, plus additional software such as Final Cut Pro and 6, which costs a lot, right? And even with a decent PC system, we, you know, you can run Adobe Premiere, which is great, uh, but it's a steep learning curve, as you know. And, uh, you know, when I first started out, I used something really simple, uh, quick and easy as well. Um, this is called Filmora, right? It's from Wondershare. Okay. Yep. It's really Vancouver. cheap. Oh, Vancouver as well? Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, supports HDR, supports SRT files. You've got the screen, screen support, uh, split screen, auto synchronization for your audio. Uh, color match. So if your if your colors are faded out, whatever, or you need that, you know, the hue, whatever, you can fix that. Uh, Built-in video effects, something simple. You know, it's yep. got the video effects, texts, and stuff like that. And as available for PCs and Macs. Um, the free version, I think you got that. What do you call it? The the uh, watermark on there, right? So yeah, you know, that's yeah. free, of course. Uh, but if you want a uh, okay. no watermark, uh, it's thirty nine dollars per year for PC per PC. So thirty nine dollars. That's cheap. You get a full video editing software that anybody can use, right? And you can bang out those videos quick and easy with uh, not much learning. You, it's everything so simple. You just drag and drop all those little files plus the audio, drag and drop those files, and then hit the uh, export. And then, and we, of course, you need to cut whatever you need to cut, but yep, hit the export nice. button, that's it. Um, don't get me wrong, it, it is a simple software. You you know, it doesn't do all the stuff you expect from Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. But for someone who's just learning how to video edit, uh, wants something to quick and easy uh, and want to bang out those videos, then this is something that I think, you you know, you should get. It's the uh, Wondershare Filmora at $39 per year. So not bad. What, what do you, you use? You <laughs> Steven. Well, <laughs> I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay. Like, um, I'm basically in that ecosystem. Yeah. Something that, uh, and, and I should mention this as well too, that uh, if you want something that is a little bit more advanced, but mm -hmm. you don't want to spend monthly for Adobe Premiere Pro, you can also go to DaVinci Resolve, which is Blackmagic. Blackmagic's yeah. DaVinci Resolve is actually a pro level uh, editing system with a lot more features when you buy the full version, but even the basic version gives you color correction, uh, editing, and also the ability to use lookup table, lots color, um, also um, advanced color grading tools, advanced editing tools, the ability to, um, to do, to ingest and use all sorts of crazy uh, numbers of uh, codecs, including black magic's own black magic raw, which is like the top, one of the top, um, ways to actually get an image that is uh unlike anything very cinematic look it's mm -hmm. like anything that comes off of a film camera if you can imagine that look you could probably do it inside the vinci resolve you can right. even uh use uh prores which is uh the apple standard, apple standard so yeah, that's yeah. that's for 
delivery to studios. They use ProRes a lot as well too. So if you want something that acts like uh, a, a full scale Hollywood editor, mm -hmm. it's free. You can download yeah. it from Blackmagic support and then you can use that. And you can also use in addition, you can use Femora as well too, because there's a lot of things here that are much faster to do on Filmora. And then you can just bring those files into the DaVinci Resolve to kind of play around with a little bit more as well too. So, you know, like it's not cheap yeah. software. It's not lesser featured Filmora. It just does things a little bit differently and faster in some cases. Mm -hmm. Even Adobe Premiere Pro, like I like the fact that I'm used to it and I'm fast on it, but yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know with any software, uh, whether it's Adobe Premiere Pro or the DaVinci uh, Resolve, uh, those are great software, of course, don't get me wrong. I mean, you can do a lot more with that. It's just you need time to learn how to use it. And yeah. there are tons of tutorials out there uh, on YouTube where you can watch that. I mean, I myself yeah. are still learning uh, on Adobe Premiere Pro because since I signed up for the Adobe subscription, which I'm paying like what, $78, $70 a, uh, mm -hmm. per month, but I get the full suite, right? I'm getting like yeah. uh, Photoshop, I'm getting uh, Illustrator, Lightroom I'm getting is my favorite. Lightroom, I'm getting Adobe now, Premiere and uh, Acrobat. I'm getting all of those great software for a subscription, which, you know, $70 a month. I think uh, I, yeah. I, I use a lot of that because you think, oh, it's a lot, but it is. If you need that software and it does that professionally, you, you can't beat the price. And yeah, I, like I I love the fact that they did do the subscription level because if I was going to yeah. buy those packages separately, like five years ago, it's thousands of dollars, thousands right? of I dollars. Mean, yeah. Like uh, I think uh, out of the package, I use audition because I use that for, mm. uh, uh, voiceover self tapes I use, uh, and also, um, uh, ADR. I also use Adobe Premiere, Premiere Pro media encoder for exports, uh, after effects occasionally mm -hmm. for titling and everything like that. I use Lightroom a lot because I don't like using Photoshop as much anymore because much of the stuff that I do, I can do in Lightroom much, much faster, much faster. saves to the cloud. Yeah. Also works on my phone. That's true. That's true. All oh. my all my effects are available That's to right. me on my phone, and I forgot I can, to mention. I can edit right here. Yeah, the the, uh, the the subscription also gives you the cloud services, including all the yep. storage that you Back need, backup and everything, backup like that. and everything, so, which is fantastic. It's and, really uh, good, but it's also again, it's seventy eight dollars a month versus thirty nine dollars a year. True, uh, Winston, true. you found something really great that people can at, at least start on for $39. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But if you want something that's more powerful, DaVinci Resolve is right around the corner and it has the same editing workflow of Adobe Premiere. The only thing, and I'll have to stress this, is that if you like how uh, Adobe Premiere, you can actually just take all the files and have it on one hard drive. DaVinci oh, well, that's Resolve, the thing. That's, does yeah. it work? So you can save some yeah. of your Adobe Premiere files and then import it into um, the DaVinci Resolve. You can use it that way, but DaVinci Resolve does one quirky thing that you may not be, uh, most people are not aware of. And that's the fact that they use a database system. So what that means is that the file that you normally would, sh would save on the hard drive in Adobe Premier Premiere Pro, if you're working on a project mm -hmm. inside DaVinci Resolve, that project file lives inside a database. So it oh. doesn't actually save to the hard drive. So let's just say that the database file got corrupted or something happened to it. Your project file would actually live inside there. It would be corrupted as well Ooh. too, even okay. though you have all your files. Now there's redundancies and checks and it's a very robust system, but in order for you to export a project and archive it or take it somewhere else, mm -hmm. you would actually have to do a archive export to get it out of there. You can't just drag and drop your entire phone. Right, right. Just FYI, a lot, a lot of people have lost projects just not realizing that that's how it works, okay. going from Premiere to this and then- Just just, just watch and uh, read yeah. up on all the tutorials, yeah. okay? And make sure you have backups for that's sure. That's the big one. That's the big <laughs> one. That's the big mistake. So you've got this amazing film, you've edited it, taken months to do it. You've deleted uh, Adobe Vivici <laughs> off your yeah. machine. Well, guess what? The database file is gone too, sorry. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I like the. I've I've been using Filmora when I first started, and um, few times the the actual software I wouldn't say crashed. It was that my video footage was too big, right? We're talking yeah. like a gig or two gigs per footage, and I think uh, if you're running Windows system, especially Windows, it yeah. uh, probably used a ball of cache or whatever, and it kind of crashed. The, right, it crashed. Yeah. It, it's just Windows it issue. Happen. It happened. A good thing about Filmora as well when I. Double click on the to restart the Filmora app, 
it asks me, hey, we, did it, uh, we detected a system crash. Would you like to restore your files or Don't your file? That. I thought, yes, click on yes, that. And it, it worked. It, it just restarted the app yeah. and it, it kind of like everything was in place with Good. all the, the changes that you kind of forgot to save. It was yeah. there. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. So, so that's why I recommend Affordable, it. cheap, and it, uh, it cloud saves your stuff, which... To be honest, some standalone apps on your system yeah. don't even do that. So that's actually a really nice save. Yeah. Like, it's like a like like a life vest. <laughs> right, right. And talking about apps, right? Mm-hmm. So we as you know, I've signed up to Amazon Prime and uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of shopping. Um, but tracking those items online can be a bit of a nightmare, right? And uh, but I've actually uh downloaded the software and it's called Aftership. Right, mm. and this shipment tracking app is available on iOS and Android, I believe. Um, yeah. What it does is syncs it with your email, so it automatically adds the tracking number straight into the app, and it monitors the shipment, the status of the shipment, tracks the shipment's location, and uh, there's even a link to go back to the courier. Right, okay. and okay. it's it's zero dollars. It's free. And uh, it shows you the map as well where nice. the actual shipment is going to. So it, it, you know, with a shipment, it go f- it go from one uh, depot to the next depot, from one city to the next, and nice. it, you can actually follow it. And it That's tells good. you all the you know the the timestamp of the location of the, the div, uh, of your package. Okay. And, I, and okay. I really like that, especially if you if you're buying a lot of stuff from Amazon, right? And you could just, you know, you don't even have to think about, oh, what's my tracking number? What, what? It even works with Wish. <laughs> it, does it work with Wish? I didn't know that. Yeah, it works with Wish. And uh, it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, I, it, you don't even have to copy and paste the tracking number. You order stuff online on Amazon store yep. and it will, because you get a notification from Amazon, the email of your yep. order, it will take that email and get the tracking number offer automatically, right? Nice. And uh, it will just automatically add it to the app. And when you open the app, it's there, and you can just track it. It's amazing. Probably yeah. good for those uh, AliExpress uh, deals that you <laughs> yeah. accidentally purchased. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You can actually uh, also sync it with not just Amazon, but any other uh, courier service. Mm-hmm. That has, you know, when you send, when they send a notification via email with the tracking number, it will actually take that as well. Good. So, which is amazing. And I don't even nice. need to physically add or copy and paste the tracking number. It'll just automatically add it into the app and you could just right track on. it. So right that's on. one of those uh, better apps I've used for the mobile phone. Of course, there's others, uh, but I think this one that I've used a lot more since I've joined Amazon Prime. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I think there's there's a couple different ones like Route, there's Aftership, there's also the one that's built into Shopify mm-hmm. as well too. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, like there's a lot of different ones and you know, like it's nice to know where your stuff is, especially if you forget that, oh, what is this? Oh. I can't remember. And, Did I order this? <laughs> yeah, and another thing about that, uh, also on the Echo Show 8 or any of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the smart home devices, if you order yeah. stuff on Amazon, yes, it gets delivered. It will tell you. <laughs> yes. And during this time of year, it, on Amazon devices, it'll also hide what's inside the the, the, the product. So this time of year, it won't spoil any uh, any ship, shipping yeah. or any gifts. It won't tell you what it is. It'll say, it oh, you, you have two shipments has arrived you, today. You can override it though. But don't do it this time of year. Just, just you know, keep the surprise. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite fun. That's why I like about the Amazon, these smart home devices. It's so fun to use, and it, it's got that interactivity which I didn't yeah. expect. Um, especially with all those uh, built-in apps and stuff like that, you can integrate Good. it with so many things. So yeah, that's are. that's my selection of the best uh, of 2022 gadgets and uh, software. So any other things to add that you've uh, you know tweaked your uh, Interesting. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, uh, I think we covered everything pretty, pretty well. Like, I mean, in terms of anything else that I would say this year, which was a big thing, I would probably say the next generation of GAN chargers are probably pretty compelling. Mm-hmm. I know that a lot of people are carrying around power bricks and whatnot, and as long as you have a USB C charging device, you can actually pick up some of these amazing uh, chargers that have have up to 120, 125 watts. It'll charge your MacBook, your PC, and everything in one. Plus, it'll charge your phone off the other connections. It's uh, it's really saving a lot of space on a lot of people's desks, mm-hmm. and I think that as these 
devices start becoming more mainstream, you can find them on Amazon, on yeah. Anchor, or any other brands on them. You're going to find that maybe even like Apple will stop bundling uh, chargers with their devices because then that way this entire market can flourish and you can just charge oh, yeah. Yeah. using that. There's one of the things when you're traveling, you, you have to uh, but you, you have to pack your chargers for yeah. your phone, pack your chargers for your camera, pack your chargers for this, 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 yeah. this. Imagine you can have a, a, a not power it's bank, like this but this, this power yeah. charger, which yeah, has all your <laughs> power, yeah, ports, right? USB-C yeah. ports, USB-A ports, uh, and ports for charging your laptop and everything. Yeah. If it's all coming from one bl one brick, a thin brick, you yeah. know, style of a charger, then you could just take that with you and it'll just 110, 240. It does everything. All you need is like the, the adapter plug or actually yeah. the one that I have here actually slides on all of the uh all the adapters for Europe, which I'll need oh, right. very, very soon. Yeah. Uh and also uh the UK as well too, which uses a different plug than Italy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it uses so, different yeah. one. It's a three prong yeah. thing. Yeah, this which, one's two, I think. It yeah. like goes into the wall. It's that's weird. right. You have you have two phase <laughs> power in, in the UK. That's right. Two forty. Uh, I think Europe is the same. It uses the one with the two prongs. Yeah, yeah, Europe. Yeah, you, yeah Europe is the same. Two, two twenty to two forty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but different prongs, and uh, in Asia, I think it's in Japan is one ten. In Hong Kong and China, I think it's two twenty as well. Two forty, twenty twenty. In Taiwan, it's proper. Uh, in Taiwan is 110. Is it 110? Yeah, yeah I'm sure it's 110. 110. Yeah, 110. AC. Like everything I had here plugged right into the wall, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that was the best of 2022 gadgets and mm. software. If you have any uh, special mentions, please let us know. Leave a drop Comments. it in the email. Yep. So uh, where can we find you, Stephen, if we wanted to f ask you some questions about uh, Adobe Premiere or any of the video stuff? Where can we find uh, you? You can find me at Elon's Chaotic Hellscape at Twitter. I'm at Stephen Fung. You can, you can yeah. yell at me there if you want to. Or you can choose to interact with me in a very logical and uh, very friendly manner because it's only as hellish as the people that I interact with. So please be <laughs> friendly. Uh, the other place that you can uh, find me is over at Mark Zuckerberg's more, you know, like friendly and fluffy place of Instagram where people post wonderful pictures of themselves. I will probably be posting stuff from Italy because I'm going there very soon because who says Italy? Like, let's just be perfectly honest here. Of all the places in the world that people say, oh my God, that place is a dump. No one says it's Italy. So I'm looking forward to my trip. So pay attention and see some wonderful food. Uh, maybe some, um, some nice buildings, some nice buildings. Nice building. Yeah. I'm going to have pizza and pizza. <laughs> Don't mention pineapple on the pizza. They'll kill you. No. Oh yes. Thank you very much. I hate pineapple on pizza. I think it's so wrong. So if you're of that group, make sure you come find me over at Instagram at Stephen Fung. I will be posting proper Italian food and I will be learning from hopefully the chefs there on how to create proper pizza. Yeah. With pineapple. Enjoy. How about you, Wilson? Um, you can find me at Instagram. Um, Instagram? Yeah. Instagram. Uh, metaverse yeah, thing i'm trying to think now what, <laughs> the meta they, thing. yeah the meta thing uh at winston chim and you'll find a lot of lifestyle stuff there as well and uh, i love my coffee so you see lots of different coffees from different mm -hmm. brands from different local shops and things like that so yeah you'll that's where you'll find me and uh hopefully i'm going to be able to use my doge coins on the hellish scape thing called twitter <laughs> right so <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens. See, let's my see doge they... coin oh my god my doge coin is still stuck inside the uh the hellscape of uh what's that place called again uh hell celsius is it celsius, celsius. Yeah. it's 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 rotting in hell right now wow. celsius. i think Very you should get celsius. some emails uh regarding I did. okay they well locked down my my coin so hopefully i get that back soon yeah which sign up to those um emails i think they, they they're doing some lawyer stuff find out and you can get your money yeah. back well, anyway we'll see. twitter at um, Winston Chim. So you find me there too. So <laughs> yeah, there'll be lots more of the best of 2022 to come. So we'll do more, uh, more topics to go on that towards the end of the year. And I uh, uh, wish Stephen have a, a great trip at uh, Italy. Don't forget to uh, make sure you uh, post all your stuff on there. <laughs> yeah. And um, are we uh, are we taking off for Christmas? I think we're taking off for Christmas. So we might have a week where we have a break and then we'll come back with uh, something else. That's but true. if we if we are able to put out a podcast before then, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That's right. Because that's the only way that Winston and I can let you know that we have a brand new episode ready for you 
because you are bored and must watch two guys talk to each other. Yeah. And uh, we're still going to be using the workaround until we find a better platform. And yeah. uh, I think this workaround is working fine for now. Hence, and thank you for reminding me that I have to cancel the service. <laughs> a certain service, yeah. Yeah, a certain service. Okay, great. Have a, a great time and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.